This is Danny Gallagher, CEO of Process for Growth Consulting. Organic growth and training of new financial advisors seem like two separate skill sets and problems, and yet they are completely dependent on each other for success. This presentation will explore how training of new FAs drive organic growth for existing FAs, but with a caveat. We must rethink on what are the terms of engagement with new FAs and what are the minimum expectations of training for existing FAs for all of us to be successful. Teaming is hard. Marriages fail at a 50% rate and teams are probably in the 90% area. Coming together to share workload and revenues is difficult at best. But the firms know that FAs on team average more assets under management and do more average revenue and sell more products per client and they have a lower client attrition rate. At one major firm, team FA's revenues were up an average of 20% and sold producers to decline by 6% in 2017. So where we can all tell horror stories about teaming, the bottom line, it is in our best economic interest to work through the is issues. So think of the process of teaming as a mitigation process, not a guaranteed process. I can guarantee it will not be perfect without issues, conflicts, but we can mitigate some of the issues by understanding why we form teams and how we can mitigate known potential problems. We need to manage our expectations by understanding the actual achievable reasons on why and how we team and not on what we think are the reasons to team. Around the year 2000, the industry started to grapple with that we are moving from I am a broker model executing trades for commissions to a wealth management fee-based model. This raised significant challenges for us. Teaming and the introductions of centers of expertise all started together. You must think about a time when we had no teams, no team comp, no centers of expertise, no financial plan, and all the firms were thinking through these issues collectively. There were teams, but many of them were what we used to call vertical teams, which we are no longer able to have. And teams in those days were designed mainly to handle paperwork. Yes, there was a day when paper was our biggest problem. Like all problems, we must ask ourselves, what are we really trying to solve for? It is PFGC's contention that the firms have generally adopted an affiliation model, even if we don't expressly recognize this adoption. This unrecognized part of our business model has significant ramifications for the firms and financial advisors as we have not yet standardized or honed our skill sets through terms of engagement. Affiliations are employed to extend financial advisors' expertise on a variety of products and services like life insurance, lending, stock options, 401k plans, international accounts, and structured settlement. PFGC believes that this model can and should be extended to the financial advisors and be made mandatory for all trainees. Teaming is a business model choice. We have to win new clients, gather assets, manage assets, and service our clients so we can help our clients meet their needs and goals. What is the best model to employ? There were and are two main business model roles which we have to choose from, a sole producer and or a team group. Sole producers find it difficult to scale and cover different expertises where teaming has its own built-in issues. But teaming also offers us the best opportunity to be successful through scale. Trainees have been historically treated as a standalone. What I mean is that they are not part or an important part of our business model. PFGC disagrees with this point of view. PFGC teaches that trainees are an integral part of an FA's growth strategy and are actually valuable assets to the branch office. Finally, adding an expert to your team for a product or service also raises issues and we need to understand how best to incorporate experts into our model. I always like to ask, what are we trying to solve for? And in teaming, I believe there are four main areas. When we think about teaming, what drives our decisions making process to team or not to team and what is the end goal for teaming? Are we solving for experts to be added to the FA's business? Do we want to scale and how do we define scale? How do we define roles and responsibilities? Are roles definition a necessity or even important? And finally, how can a team help with business development? 15 years ago, the first question we asked ourselves was could we train our FAs to all these new expertises that were needed to run a wealth management business? 
it didn't take us long to realize that RFAs could not in any way, shape, or form be the expert in all the solutions that any firm could offer that a client would need. In fact, we were not convinced that an FA could be the expert in any of the solutions, including managing money. Think about it. We run a business in which one aspect of managing money, so a mutual fund manager or an SMA manager, theoretically has an advantage over us. They only manage money and usually for a specific market segment. FAs manage money across the board, uh, across a broad spectrum of needs and goals. We are not estate planning attorneys nor insurance agents. Think about insurance. There are whole companies and industries built around one insurance product. We cannot expect an FA to know all the different insurance products. Stock options, 401ks, and structured products only add to the list of different expertises. So we could and did exclude the FA as the answer. Doesn't mean that some FAs don't have the expertise in one or more products, but what we are talking about is a holistic global solution for the vast majority of our FAs, and clearly it was not the answer. So we asked ourselves, do we build the team for experts? Do we work on our FAs to build a team that has a representation of all the experts needed to deliver all the solutions? Well, it works for the expertise, but since we cannot pay the experts properly, it is not a profitable model and therefore it will never happen. We want and need all the expertise, but it makes no economic sense to build a team that includes all the different people necessary to be effective. Not profitable, not happening. So a new role for our business model was introduced, which I call an affiliate, an affiliation. An affiliation is relationship by relationship, one-off delivery of a process, product, or service. Think of a mortgage for a product delivery. The mortgage person is not on your team, nor do you have a JPN with them, but rather you deliver a particular product on a one-off basis. The client may never speak to this mortgage, mortgage expert again. We could use our firm's designated wealth manager to deliver a wealth management analysis or the firm's insurance rep to review an insurance contract as a service. Once we realized that the FA was not the sole answer, but that we needed the centers of expertise, it became a cost benefit analysis of the expert's placement level. Is the expert on a team, in an office, a complex, a region, division, or national level? This is important to us today because the first lesson is, is that we do not build a team for expertise or product. We affiliate. There are several types of affiliations. First, internal centers of expertise. They are vetted, hired, and paid for by the firm. They are our advocates and only wish for us to succeed. And best of all, they don't want a piece of our business. Next, the firms have designated certain teams with certain levels of scale and expertise to offer products and services that have a higher complexity, compliance, and expected knowledge level to other financial advisors. This includes 401k plans, international accounts, stock options, and structured settlement. These affiliations are generally defined by the firms by setting a mandatory JPN split, typically 70% for the offering team and 30% for the introducing financial advisor. FAs who complain about this to me, I point out that they receive 30% of the revenue and 0% of the legal liability. The difference between the two affiliations is that the internal centers of expertise tend to be one-off situations versus the designated teams as an ongoing affili affiliation and revenue split. Finally, we can affiliate with outside centers of expertise and the rules of engagements are generally executed under what is called a professional alliance agreement. This is where the referring outside center of expertise, say an accountant, receives the percentage of the revenue generated by the referred account. This is typically in the 20 to 25 percent area. Three different processes, but all affiliation, as we solved for the introduction of experts into the financial advisor's wealth management business model. So what about scale? One and one equals three. Does three stand for more revenue, assets, or relationships? All three, how do we achieve scale? Is two better than one? PFGC has found that FAs cannot articulate answer to these basic questions, which one would assume we would know because teaming is so difficult. But if we are about to embark on a difficult journey, shouldn't we look at a map and have an idea of why and where we are going? Interestingly, when PFGC is working with teams, 
other than developing a new presentation that includes the two FAs and sharing a of a support staff, very is little done on actually integrating the two businesses. This is true for the vast majority of teams. They continue to function as separate FAs who say they are a team. When I ask the FAs, how are you a team if you have not integrated any of your processes, I get a lot of different answers, like we are a marketing team, whatever that is. Or, or the clients like to see a team even if we don't actually work together. And we wonder why teams fail. Could it be that they were never actually a team? My opinion is that teaming is hard. And if you're going to work through the, some of the difficult issues, you might as well reap the rewards of teaming. If two or more FAs indicate they're thinking about teaming, I ask them to sit down and try to come up with a mutual agreement on one standardized investment process. Because all teaming processes are predicated on a standardized investment process. No matter what you can say about a team, I believe it is impossible to scale the team's business without an agreed upon standardized investment process. Scale is literally impossible. The team is destined to fail before they even start. What is the best process to develop and employ a standardized investment process? I encourage two FAs who are going to team to keep their existing books separate. I also make it a must that they create an overlay standardized investment process. The FAs can move their existing books into the standardized model over a period of time. Practically speaking, this takes two to three years to transition existing a book, but that's okay. The team and the new clients are operating under the standardized investment process. This gives the team commonality. This allows team members to cover all new team clients because they understand how the clients are invested. Two separate investment processes breaks down team functions and processes on every level. If you have a standardized investment process, you can then build a standardized presentation. Incorporate a standardized wealth management process, discovery process, articulation, and finally start earning designations that support each different process. Without a standardized investment process, none of the other team processes can be built. A team has a connotation of commonality, yet FAs team all the, team, all the time without agreeing on why, how, and what they will present to a prospect client together. All these processes must, I repeat, must be standardized for the affiliation model. Roles and responsibility. I work with teams and they want to have a definition of roles and responsibilities. I participated in several coaching forums where each one of the coaches had to explain our value proposition. I spoke with four coaches once and three of the four coaches I presented said that their expertise was role definition. Myself, I was not and I am not a buyer of role definition, but it isn't for the lack of trying. Through experience and a lot of hard work, PFGC believes in process definition. Let's discuss. In building our business model, I believe we need to think like the six blind men who the Raj asked to describe an elephant, where each blind man touched a different part of the elephant and accurately described the individual part. In no way did any of the blind men actually describe the elephant. All the different parts added up are the sum of the whole that describes an elephant. And like the six blind men, we must identify all our functions and processes and ensure that they work together holistically to get us to the goal of building a business model that drives revenues. Our main issue is that we aren't six people, but only one or two or maybe three. A team must first identify all their processes and think through the importance of each one and then loosely rank them in importance. PFGC believes that we must be highly trained relationship managers first. We deal with people. It is incumbent that we have a highly defined relationship management skill set. We must train ourselves and standardize our affiliations with internal and external centers of expertise. We must have a well-defined business development process that actually gets us new relationships. When we get in front of our prospect, we must have an in-depth discovery process and wealth management process that is based on a highly defined and standardized investment process. Everything must be interdependent and interrelated. Nothing is a throwaway. Nothing is a nice to have. More importantly, we need to understand how important each function is and what level of importance and time we spend on each function. 
we cannot choose to eliminate a function as the sum of all the functions define our business model. Take discovery. It is estimated that less than 1% of FAs employ in the, the in-depth discovery, yet it is arguably the most important function. Yet an FA, if a FA had 20 net new meetings in a year, we could only dream this was true, and the discovery was, let's say, two hours long, then the FA would spend 40 hours in the year executing a discovery process. That's 40 hours per year out of the 2,080 average work hours in a year. Not a lot of time spent, but extremely important process. Understanding our processes and each process's value in the business model is critical. We cannot function under the assumption that what I spend the most time on is the most important because we are, if we are anything, we are champion time wasters. Finally, we need to standardize as much as possible every function process so we can free up time for business development, wealth management, and affiliations. PFGC has tried very hard to define roles and responsibilities and work with several teams to see what is the best methodology to gain this clarity. This is an example of an 850 million asset under management team with six members. We did a role and responsibility study over two months on every action of a team member. What we learned was that everyone did everything and who was the backup depending on who was available. The study showed that role definition was a nice to have, but is not relevant to understanding our business models. If everyone on the team does every role, either as a primary or a backup, then the roles are far less important to understand on how each member functioned in a process. The definition of function process is a grouping of roles and responsibilities to deliver a service, solution, or product to a client prospect. Henry Ford taught us that clearly defined roles and responsibilities increase production, scale. But in the end, my thoughts are we are not nearly big enough as a business for us to define the roles and responsibilities. It is a nice to have, but it's not relevant. If you're forming your team, think of different processes, not roles and responsibilities. Team FAs will have many of the same responsibilities, but with its different emphases. As a group comes together, the first step in understanding that everyone will do everything and not get caught up in the weeds. So we think of processes as primary, secondary, and tertiary. We then can assign designations that help deliver, with expertise, these processes. So investments is the certified portfolio manager, and the wealth management process is the certified financial planner. So teams should think about what process each FA should have as a primary, secondary, or tertiary, and then work to define, standardize their processes and attain the proper designations. It should be noted that the secondary process for all FAs is business development, every ore in the water. Business development is probably the biggest single reason for teams to come together and is the biggest single reason that teams break up. Business development, new relationships, net new assets should drive teaming decisions, but FA should affiliate with each other first. In other words, work together to see if there's a match. It's like dating before you get married. Build a center of influence COI presentation. PFGC has a webinar on how to build a COI presentation. Agree to a net new asset policy with a standardized investment process, and then go on meeting together or separately. In other words, work together. Find out if you can actually have a fit. You don't really know until you try. If the team's goal is to increase time spent on business development, then the FAs must be aware that their business model will change entirely. <clears throat> FAs see their existing business model and they project that model on their new teaming model. It never works. If the team starts going on a lot of new meetings and acquiring new relationships, they will find they need entirely new roles and responsibilities in their business model because of the new bottlenecks in their processes. I can always tell when a team actually starts going on new meetings as their old business model breaks down immediately. This is good news as they are now working for new clients instead of managing money. Do not team for business development until you've affiliated and understand the new bottlenecks that will drive the development of your team infrastructure. The single greatest reason teams fail is net new assets. It makes sense. We are paid through assets under management. It is our livelihood. Every new team I coach, I make them write down a net new asset policy. 
I use the example that whoever brings in the assets gets 90% the first year, and then it goes into the team number after that. That said, the teams come up whatever they want and do whatever they want, which is good. Some teams have three pages of single space type scenarios on all the rules of engagement. What if your client starts talking to me, then refers a new client to me? Who gets the credit? I don't know. It's up to you. Admittedly, FAs give me lip service when they first write their net new asset policy. But within a year, they then get serious as assets become the major issue. The policy is never perfect, but it gives the FAs an agreed upon starting point for future discussion. A net new policy, net new asset policy mitigates problems, but it certainly does not eliminate them. So what can we actually solve for? One, we do not build teams for expertise nor for product. Unfortunately, I do equities and you do fixed income is the number one that we don't do. Frankly, it's the worst reason of all to team. But we do team for an expertise for a process, like a CFP for the wealth management process. Number two, scale can only be achieved through commonality. You can keep your existing books separate. You really should in the beginning, but then you create a new overlay that starts with a standardized investment process and then um, develop the rest of your processes based on that. Three, role definition is not important as understanding who owns what processes or parts of the process. Four, if you ask me, the number one reason to build a team is to have a robust business development process that is firmly entrenched in a wealth management process. These two processes will be the main drivers of teaming for the foreseeable future. And five, finally, a net new asset policy is the necessity to mitigate the problems caused by one team member outperforming another. It always happens, always. So with so many different affiliations that we're already employing, we need to think through how can we best hone the skill of affiliation? PFGC believes that standardization is now the critical component of a financial advisor's success, and we can look to Apple as a master of affiliation in building an ecosystem for success. So why compare us against Apple? Well, who's the premium pricer in technology? Apple is. Who's the premium pricer in the financial services? We are. So let's look at Apple. Android versus iOS. The operating platforms are the two competitors. Android has 85% market share devices versus Apple has 15%. Yet 88% of apps are built first for iOS, not Android. The average app on iOS earns over $52, while the average app on Android earns a little over $5. Which one do we want to be? Amazingly, 78% of all online sales happen on an Apple OI iOS device, not on an Android device. Why? With 85% of market share, shouldn't you be the dominant player? But Apple has built a defined standardized platform, the famous Apple ecosystem, that makes it easy, easier for multiple experts, programmers, and entities companies to affiliate with Apple's platform. When Apple introduces a new level of iOS, say iOS 11.0, it is announced with a lot of fanfare. But no one notices when a couple weeks later, Apple announces that 99% of all the Apple devices, over 1.2 billion in the world, are updated, and yet that is actually the most important piece of information. Android recently announced Android 8.0. Oreo. But in the announcement, admitted that the largest amount of Android devices, 23%, only 23%, were running 3.4 version of Android. The tip of the spear, 8.0 Oreo, the newest new Android, has 0.08%. Android just announced their own phone, and everyone was asking why. But in the announcement, Android said they needed the phone to control updates, standardization. And this standardization has allowed Apple to become the premium pricer in the industry. The Apple 10 phone is not demonstrably better than the Samsung 8 Edge, but who gets the premium pricing? Apple. We must standardize all our processes, platform, 
so that we may affiliate with multiple experts so we can maintain our premium pricing by offering a premium service. If an FAA standardized their processes, articulation, presentations, discovery, wealth management, investment management, then you can start more effectively and efficiently affiliate with many different people. These standardizations set the team up for organic growth. For the first time, the team functions as an asset gatherer, not as a money manager. First, we standardize ourselves, then we standardize our interactions with each of the following, each of the different affiliations. We define the terms of engagement. Standardization seems like a nice to have, but in reality, it is of the utmost importance. Once we standardize our processes, we can start affiliating. The easiest affiliation for an FA or group ability to affiliate is with the internal centers of expertise. The internal COIs are paid for by the firm. They don't want a piece of your business and they are on your side as an advocate. There is no revenue share, but we must work to standardize how we affiliate with our centers of expertise. We leave way too much to chance. PFGC believes that we can do much better in standardizing the terms of engagement. PFGC believes this whole process should be electronic, not physical paper. Actually, an FA should be able to Google their firm by life event, say a stock caller. It's not even that. What is, I have low cost stock. What can we do from there? Up will come all the relevant information in a packet for the FA to decide if the client should move forward. Today, with the new AI driven CRMs being launched, this could be a seamless process. I personally spent 28 years at Morgan Stanley and worked in many different capacities across the retail and institutional world. I believe that a major BD has the capability to solve many, up to 400 different strategies for life events. But the solution may originate on the rates desk. What's the rates desk? FAs think in life events, as do our clients. Let's solve for that. Many firms have strategic partnering groups that teach FAs how to partner with other FAs. PFGC believes that first, we should learn all the capabilities of our firm and how to find them and then be an expert on how to partner with our firms. Strategic partners should con concentrate there first. Next, PFGC believes that business development should be driven through affiliating with external centers of expertise or influence. 84% of high net worth clients get their lawyer, accountant, and financial advisor from a referral. We must insert ourselves into their processes. One successful affiliation can and should lead to multiple referrals from a COI. I saw a study where only 3% of all the sales in the country are executed on an outgoing call. Cold calling for product, as I cold called on 25 hours preferreds, is dead. The Internet of Things is about relationships and accountants and estate planning attorneys are our natural allies. PFGC watchwords are one client, one solution. So no matter how many different brokerage accounts a client may have, there are still one client, one solution. All solutions for clients entail three basic skill sets, investments, taxes and estate planning. The solution is interrelated and interdependent on each expertise, even though we do not deliver all three, and we will not for the foreseeable future. Affiliate with external centers of expertise to drive your relationship management skills and net new relationships. As we pointed out earlier, the firms recognize that certain teams have developed skill sets and scale in services, products, and processes that have a higher expertise and compliance profile so the firms consolidate customers, processes, and products for the, to these designated teams, and we affiliate with those teams for the usual 30-70 split. These teams can offer 401k plans administration, stock options, international clients, and structured settlements as an example. The firms insist that FAs affiliate with these centers of expertise, as they should. There are two things that our industry has found difficult to accomplish over the year. The first is organic growth, and the second is training of new financial advisors. I was with the senior executive of a major BD, and I said I heard that another major BD's training results were that only 13% of trainees survived training after three years and 6% after five. 
And then of the 6%, it was felt that fully 50% were still there because the senior FA paid for the baby. Amazingly, the executive felt that those numbers were high, really high. This is not a new issue as the industry has struggled for, I would say, at least 25 years with both of these things. Now, I call them baby brokers. It is not an insult. Another senior exec asked me if they were insulted by this terminology. I told them on the contrary. Baby brokers are really like two-year-olds with a parabolic learning curve. Baby brokers appreciate that I recognize their problems and develop the system to assist them in being successful. Frankly, the most common remarks are, why don't the firm train us the way you do? This is far from a complete list of what babies to do list. Remember, the babies spend their first three months studying passing several exams. I know they're supposed to be learning other things, but the immediacy of being terminated if you fail the test dominate their thinking. Next, and this is really important, how does an FA decide what business model to employ? We all know that the FAs run different business models and they are very different. The babies can figure out by what office size the FA has, if the FA is sitting in, on whether the FA is successful or not, but the optics of what office you are in doesn't address how the FA became successful. Some FAs pick socks, some only do SMAs, some do discretionary platforms or the firm model platform. Some FAs have several designation, others have none. Some do wealth management, but most do not. But most FAs do not raise net new assets. We all know the numbers. 73% of FAs do not open one account over 250,000 in a year, and every and that's every year, and 85% do not open an account over a million dollars in a year. So generally speaking, any FA that a new FA patterns their business model on is at a major disadvantage as the number one goal of a baby is to raise net new assets. Yet we just hand off our new FAs to FAs who have a proven track record of not raising net new assets. So I think we can agree that there should be a rethink on our training process. We don't actually have a training process, but more of a process on how to manage out the babies in the most cost-effective manner. If that is our goal, we are incredibly successful. But if we want our new FAs to succeed, then I would suggest a change to our process. First, PFGC believes that no trainee should be put on a team. That means none. I know we have used trainees as some kind of reward, but this practice must end. It is counterproductive and stops us from reaching our goals. Instead, babies should be encouraged to affiliate with trained teams and multiple teams, teams that have highly defined and standardized processes. This goes for babies who are hired by their parent relative teams. I know this will never happen, but to protect the baby, do not allow this. This does not stop the parent or relative from assigning revenues and assets to their sibling. Just do not allow teaming until the new FA establishes themselves. Save the FA from themselves and save the sibling from their relatives. Why no teaming? PFGC believes the two hardest actions we are asked to do are one, raise net new assets. Every FA I ask, what is the hardest thing to do in our business? And the answer is get net new assets. That's on the business side. On the business model side, PFGC believes that the hardest thing to do is teaming. I don't think there's any argument there. So beside all the other things a baby must do, we then force them to join a team, a very difficult thing to do even when you are well-versed in the business. The new FA has no way to assess, assess a team and whether or not the team will be helpful to them. So PFGC believes that the baby should be asked, asked eight questions of a team. If the team cannot answer all the questions with the yes, and I mean all eight, then the baby cannot affiliate with the team. A hard, fast rule of engagement. These questions are for the baby to broker to know if the group or the FA will be helpful to them. This not a comment on the success or the business model of the FA or the group. It is a comment on whether the team can be helpful to a baby. We have to stop making decisions for FAs and start making them for the babies. 
The branch manager has a major role to play. First, the branch manager needs to set a standard of training of existing FAs who will be allowed to affiliate with the trainees. This is first, but the most important step. Next, the branch manager hires all the trainees. Branch managers should be targeting people with CLUs, CFPs, and CPAs. Why? Well, I'll answer these two questions. What percent of FAs in your office manage assets to assist their clients in meeting their needs and goals? It's not a trick question. And the answer is it's 100%. It's how we think of ourselves. Most of us think of ourselves as money managers. I know I did. Second, what percent of your FAs in your office are holistic wealth managers? To PFG's 43 years of experience in the business, I would say somewhere around 1%. So what is the most valuable commodity in our offices? I repeat, what is the most valuable commodity? Managing money or wealth managers? Feed the future because there's a small chance that in 10 years we will be managing money. You can see PFGC's Big Data AI webinar, but we will definitely be wealth managers in 10 years. Second, branch managers must be the agent for the babies and representing them for their affiliation. This means that the branch manager works in the best interest of the baby, not the FA. I have seen every way that a branch manager assigns babies. The FA is not growing. The FA is old. We want to pass the book along. The FA does more than a million in revenue. The FA wants a cold caller. The FA doesn't do wealth management. The list is endless and all based upon the FA. It is not a surprise babies fail as all our decisions are based upon the FA and not for the baby. The branch manager must negotiate and enforce a fair pricing model that is signed off in writing by the FA and the baby. This is an example of a proposed pricing model for an affiliation with either an FA or a trainee. Again, this is on a relationship by relationship engagement. Repeat, affiliations use a relationship by relationship pricing model. This is not a teaming agreement. Multiple JPN should be open upon the agreement to affiliate. 1090, 3070, 5050, 7030, 9010. This is just the start. Why? It teaches us flexibility. There is no one JPN split that can encompass all the possible variations when affiliating. We learn by doing. Affiliating with trainees drives net new assets. A successful firm standard is that a baby raises between 12 and 25 million in net new assets in the first two years. Teams generally capture around 37% in my affiliation model. So do the math. Let's work with a number in the middle, 18 million in two years. That's around six and a half million in net new assets for the FA team. What are the numbers we are competing against? 73% do not open one new relationship over 250 and 85% don't, don't open up an account over a million dollars. Babies are the driving force of an office's organic growth. They are critically important to our success. We need to baby them. And that's a pun intended. One of PFGC's clients pointed out that FAs were approaching them to work with them in a one-off manner, affiliation. The FAs watched how they work with the babies and wanted the same deal. The FA told me they're willing to pay for the four Ps. They're willing to pay for people. That means the senior financial advisor executes a discovery process. They also will pay for a wealth management process. They'll pay for the CFP designation. Presentations, standardized. All babies tell me the most valuable item for teaming is the presentations. You may not think so, but they really do. And the standardized investment process portfolio driven by metrics. Babies and FAs who affiliate need a standardized investment process so they don't look stupid when talking to their own relationship. Again, it is not about the FA. It is about the person affiliating. PFGC believes that affiliation, strategic partner, partnering, and in the end, teaming, is driven through the ability to deliver a wealth management process. It is not investment driven. In a fee compression environment, FAs will not partner to give up their diminishing fees, but wealth management is considered additive. I gave up my car. I live in Brooklyn. 
when I read that the average American uses their car only 3% of the time in a year, I thought I was about 1%. The biggest business driver we have, probably responsible for 99% of new relationships is, excuse me, is net new meetings. My educated guess is that out of the 28, 2080 work hours in a year, we do not spend 62 hours or 3% of our time in new meetings. To be the tip of the spear is to spend three to 5% of your time meeting new people. Everyone must prospect, every oar in the water, but trained financial, senior financial advisors should affiliate to extend their reach and their ability to close. Let's look at a team that employs the affiliation model. This is a real team. And in PFGC's opinion, the best trained team for affiliations. Again, I'm being precise in my choice of words. The best trained team for affiliation. I believe they raised over 100 million in net new assets last year. As the standardized pre as de presentation is designed to inform prospects who we are, what we do, and how we do it. First, the bios, who we are. Designation. This team has all these designations. They are an outlier, but this is part of our challenge to assist our FAs in getting this, these designations. This is what the future competition looks like. When presented to a prospect client, we speak something like this. The team has a CFP, which means to you that we are trained to understand our clients on a holistic basis and assisting them in meeting all their needs and goals. The CPM designation means that we are trained to portfolio management to design a proper portfolio to meet your needs and goals. We have the portfolio manager designation because we have chosen to work with our clients on a discretionary platform. This means that even though our firm is not a fiduciary firm, we must and the firm must deal with you using the fiduciary standard, which you might understand as best interest. What do designations mean to a prospect client? Not on how smart I am, but what it means to them. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Support staff. Support staff is highly trained to understand and fulfill any service you may need. What we do. What we do are all the things that we do that the prospect doesn't know that we do. Any prospect or client know, that goes to an FA knows we do investments. We want to tell them so much more. Notice the three buckets. Any mention of investments? How we do it. This is the wealth management process. And then follow it like an agenda. The wealth management process lays out all our capabilities and how they are delivered. Investment philosophy. We never tell prospects how we will invest their money because we have not executed an in-depth discovery process. It is iterated that we run a standard, low-cost, tax-efficient, metric-driven investment model. This is HBC's team's affiliation pricing model. They can sit down with a baby or an FA and tell them who they are, what they do, and how they do it, and how the baby or FA can work with the team by affiliating on a relationship-by-relationship -relationship basis. Here are a couple of examples from other PFGC clients. Everyone's different. And that's okay. This one's somewhat the same. Set of circles, rectangles. Again, I'm agnostic. Now, the HBC group affiliates with a senior financial advisor, Patricia Glass. Patricia is first on the presentation as she is highly experienced and trained FA with over 20 years in the business. H HBC is used by Patricia for wealth management. A point to be made here. As previously mentioned, before FAs <clears throat> will generally partner for wealth management more than they will for investment. This is an example of that happening. Next, HBC is affiliated with Gill as Gill prepares to retire. Again, Gill is first as he is a highly trained, experienced financial advisor, but is looking to add wealth management for his clients. Notice a pattern here. Now, here's the baby. Andrew has made it through the program and he is on his own. Why is the team first and Andrew is second? When we hire a baby, the first thing we ask them to do is develop a spreadsheet with all the people they know and what is the perceived opportunity. This is great, except that all those people who Andrew knows also knows that Andrew is a baby broker. 
This means it is highly unlikely they will give Andrew their money. They may give him a little because they know him, but they don't really trust him. This is no different for any new FA. So the goal of a baby is to show the people he knows that he was intelligent enough to affiliate with a team that they can do business with. Andrew has three affiliations. One of them is with the HBC group. Andrew is not on a team he affiliates. Joe is also a baby, is another affiliation. Even though Joe is from the institutional side of the business, meaning he is very well trained in the financial world, he was not well trained to wealth management. Finally, a team affiliates with Karen, another trainee. A couple of observations. First, the team leaders, Brev and Jason, believe it is part of their job descriptions to identify, engage, and affiliate with trainees and FAs. They work at it. It is part of their job description. Second, the HBC group has highly standardized processes, which allows them to easy, easily affiliate with other FAs. Every FA who affiliates with the HBC group is in essence agreeing to adopt the HBC processes. Thus, it doesn't matter on how many FAs or babies affiliate with them. HBC doesn't change, the FAs do. Third, everyone who affiliates with the HBC group knows what to expect when they introduce a prospect or client as all the processes are standardized. This is incredibly important. No one wants to introduce someone to a team and then be blindsided. It's a non-starter. Now, the HBC group also affiliate. The Martin Rizzo group is nationally known as experts in structured settlements. We all affiliate, but what we must start standardizing are the terms of engagement. This is a snapshot of last year's affiliation pipeline for the HBC group. I believe they raised over 100 million in assets next year. Notice affiliations are additive. This team functions for net new meetings. They affiliate to increase their net new meetings. We have learned we don't team for expertise, we affiliate. We do team to bring on trained wealth manager, but the wealth manager is treated like an FA, meaning that they have to bring in net new relationship just like everyone else. They just have to have wealth management as a primary process. We don't team so someone gets a higher payout. I get it. The firms are trying to drive behavior. Teaming is better than not, but it drives bad behavior and reduces the odds of a team will be successful if you do it for a higher payout. Imagine if your firm offered $25,000 a year to their employees to get married because they believe married employees are more productive. What would we say? Getting married for all the wrong reasons? Teaming is as close to marriage as anyone would want to come. PFGC believes it would be far better if the firms offered a higher payout based upon the percent, percentage of an FA's revenues generated through affiliation, all the different kinds of affiliation. Before you team, date, affiliate. You date before you get married, so not, why not affiliate before you team? Before you affiliate, agree upon a net new asset policy, a standardized investment process, and define the processes through primary, secondary, and tertiary participation. Pre-teaming work is far more important before you team. Give yourself a fighting chance. Affiliate. Teaming is difficult at best, but we can mitigate some of the issues. The leader of this process is the branch manager. The branch manager drives organic growth through the hiring of skilled babies to seed the future of the branch and the firm. Hire for where the puck is grow going, CFP, CLU, CPA, so you can support wealth management. Branch managers should be the agent for all babies working in their best interest. They are our future. Protect them, assist them, and coddle them. Don't manage them out. Manage your FAs to help them. PFGC trains the branch manager the FA or FA teams, and the trainees. For a branch to adopt all three parts, it's $20,000 per branch. This is less than the quarter of one trainee's salary and benefits and their branch fixed costs for a year, and the branch will be able to grow organically and train their babies to a much higher success rate. PFG believes that 80% of babies will pass the low bar set by the firms. Thank you for your time.
any questions or comments for the good of the whole.